Recording. Coffee. And this is, it's a blur here, so I have to go back. I just have to focus back here, you know. Am I tiny now? Probably not. Okay, welcome to the biggest product photography slash still life channel in Sweden. <laughs> Today, I will shoot a Today we will shoot one bottle, I mean, what is it? Shampoo with only one flash, natural light, the sun. This is the goal. I see a lot of this going on now, shadow play, but often it's done the wrong way, so to say. I mean, it for me at least it doesn't look realistic so let's do this as realistic as possible today as you see i place this purple paper on the floor very elegant and beautiful that is very important to have a smooth and everything perfect you know so that's why i've been so you know i just throw in a bottle of shampoo and it's also purple today i will not shoot Tedred, I will shoot and then I will put up the images in the video and we have a flash up there that you don't see and I have to show you this and you will see all the mess in this office right now it goes and it's up there yes see okay so one flash far away and let me take the second shot and I will turn on this flash and there is some um, guide light coming in yes now you might see a bit better this paper is so beautiful the shadow and that is good you know this is number one reason why I do not recommend speed lights at least this cheaper ones um, without any modeling light because then you will not see anything you're doing you're just guessing and in product and still life you have to be a bit more precise using many flashes speed lights without any modeling light it will take so much longer time you have to move it test shot move it test shot move it test shot it's okay now we have the sun up there and it's like maybe five meters away and I really hope I could place it at least five more meters away because when you are trying to replicate the sun you should have it very far away because now the light source is like, it's like this and it's a bit big probably, the sun is smaller. The main reason why I'm doing this tutorial is Let's place this plant. I will place it over here. The light is coming from there and this is in the way of the light. And then hopefully it will hit on the surface. So let's take a shot. Yes, this is probably the most realistic way to place this plant because normally you don't have a plant that close to the floor. I mean, <laughs> the surface here. I want to make it, I mean, it's more realistic when it is this kind of soft shadows. If you watched my channel before, I use um, Dido light attachment to a multi-spot, Pro Photo multi-spot. A very expensive solution to create this kind of gobos. I mean, create these patterns. You're putting in gobos, patterns like plants, jungles, anything. And many are asking for this. Is there some other way? I think you should just place the flash, flash far away and then you put something in between a gobo, between the light and the product. It will look realistic. Because if you're using this projection light, you can get super hard edges. And that looks 
fake to me. You should not really do this. Because if we take this plant and place it closer to the product. Let's take a shot now. Wow, this I like. The closer you place the stuff, the plants to the product, the sharper the edges will be, the clearer the shadow play will be in the shot. So you don't mess with the, the light or the camera. They are like fixed. And then you just adjusting with moving this plant in this case. And depending how sharp you would like to have the, the edges of the plant shadow, I think it more, looks more realistic when it's a bit further away. You know, normally plants are in windows and maybe palm trees and whatnot. But this looks realistic and beautiful, I think. So I'm happy to have it there. And if you like to have it even sharper, you might say, like a projection. But I just told you, then it will not look so realistic. Because if you, let's take my driving license, pretend this is the plant. If I want to have sharper edges of this plant, this shadow, then you know, I really need to be super close. You see the shadow edge, it's very sharp now because I'm holding it very close to the product, of course. And if you like to have this sharp edge, you really need to move the plant like it has to be in the frame. And you can do that, of course, but I like to have it off. I don't want to show this plant. The problem with having a small space, I want to move it further away the flash so it's not brighter here than over there. In the upper left corner, it's too bright. I don't want to have this. But then I will put up a black flag to flag the flash off a bit. And I don't put it over here, because then we will have a sharp edge from this. I put it very close to the flash instead. I put it over here. Before I show you, let me take a shot. Yes, now we took away a bit. Yes, I like this, because now there is some shadow up in the left corner. Some random stuff going on that you don't know what it can be, but it doesn't matter, it's fine. So now it's just placed over there. Let me... Okay, I have to take this off again. I'm blocking the light and I place it very close to the light. I'm sorry that it's home blown out. Yes, and now it will cut off a bit of the lower, the lower light. I mean, the, you know, the light comes like this and you're blocking the harshest light. So it, now it will only take the upper part of the light that we hit the product and we get a nice shadow up in the left corner there. This I like. So, are we done? Yes, this is it. But we can do something else. I want to mention one thing. I'm using a bare flash. You know, I, I don't put any modifier on. Not a reflector, not softbox. No, nothing. And if we put on, now it's too much mess here. I, I cannot put it on. But if we would put on a standard reflector with a honeycomb grid, that would add contrast in the image. These shadows from the plant, they are kind of soft. They are not, they're not so much contrast in them because this light, it goes everywhere in this room. The shadows will be lifted up because of the bounce all the bounce around of the light. If you want to control it, you put this on, then the shadows will be totally black. And one other thing, I was talking with a member on the Facebook group and we gave her feedback on the live streams and she had a double shadow for some reason. She was using one light and had a double shadow and she had the flash up here and uh, she was holding a, a leaf in between the light, a gobo in between the light and the product and then she got a, a double shadow and my theory about this is because she was using this, a reflector, not a pro photo. There was another brand, I don't know what it was, but sometimes 
these guys can give double shadows. You know, you get the harder shadow from the flash itself, and then you get a bounce from this, a bit, you get a bit softer shadow from the reflector itself. So it's one, two, becomes two light sources. So don't use a reflector, use a bare flash for this. Hey, Filipok! Reflector, no, no, bare flash, good. So, what's next? If you look to the right of the product, the shadow side, it becomes very shadowy, very dark. And then I would just take a, some white card and reflect a bit light back. But before I show you this, we can take a look at the, the product. How does it look? This is kind of a, it's a matte finish, like a semi, semi matte, semi glossy. So it's, uh, you have to watch out a bit when you're using a small flash, so you don't get these nasty reflections. But I think it looks kind of nice. Um, and we have the, on this name on the, on the left, this text, purple text, the light hits it, and also the shadows, of course. And I can live with this, maybe. The only thing I cannot live with, the label, for some reason. And you see, under the S here, there is uh, this specular, specular highlights, we can call it. And it's because it's a small light source. It's not a big diffusion. So I wonder if we should do something about this. Let me try. Where is the diffusion panel here? And let me just take a test shot by blocking the product. I mean, blocking the light. What about this? Yes, it becomes smoother. But now I'm looking at the label and now I'm a bit happier. It's smoother. I will only use this light. I will do composite. I will only use this soft light for the label, probably. And also, you see the, the cap. This doesn't look nice. The reason for this is because the cap isn't nice. I mean, it's like a bit crooked plastic there. So I wonder if we have to fix this in Photoshop. Probably there is no way to get this nice. If I block the light again, I'm going close. Probably we can use that one as a reference and then I will fix it in Photoshop because there is no way to make it look nice because of the material. So, okay, now we fix the label. I might take that one with the diffused light for the label. But now I would like to show you if the client thinks the product is too dark, we need to brighten it up. And then I would just take, like this is a white plastic car, and then I would just hold it on the side. And then I get my head out of the frame. Maybe something like this. Now we get like a highlight on the right side, but I think it's too bright needs to be softer because I don't want it to overpower the left light. So let's move it back a bit. One thing I didn't show you, I put under some tacket under and let's take this away. You know, this. When I do this, this reflection, we brighten up, you see, there is too much space to the right side of the label than the left. So then I just tilt the product with some tacket. I put it under. Let's take another one. See if it was too much, if it was good, bad. More like the label is in the center, yes? Now I touch the product. So now we have to take the first shot again. And then I will take one soften up the label and then I will also take this one a few of these when I lifting up the shadows on the right side of the label so I'm playing with the distance I prefer not to lift up the shadow I think it's more realistic when it's just and no reflection. If the client thinks it's too dark, you have to fix it. And then I would use just a card to bounce back. If you want to play even more, you know, silver foil. And with this one, let's turn off the 
the LED. Let's see if we can create something fun. Adding something more. I mean, this looks like, gives me like a summary by the water seaside feeling or pool, maybe. There's something over here that is reflecting. This would look fantastic if it was a video. <laughs> see, I will take a few, see if there is something we can use. Oh, well, this is really crazy stuff. Maybe it should not be too crazy. I will take one more from this side. Now we are not only playing with shadows, we're also playing with light, but still one light source. And you know, there can be something reflecting back this. I mean, the sun is hitting not only the surface and the product, it's hitting something else, giving this strange reflection. We'll see if I will use without any bounce back. Maybe I only will use the light play. You saw it in the beginning, the thumbnail, you will see the, what I used. I don't know yet. I need to go into Photoshop. And uh, this is just a few layers and uh, I don't think I would do uh, like a Photoshop tutorial about this. If you know layers, you just use like two, three pictures and then you have fantastic shot, you know. So, coffee. Okay, I hope you learned something from this and you can get inspired to do your own shot and show it in the Facebook group. And then we will give feedback together in the live streams on Sundays, 6 p.m. Swedish time. You know, you don't have to have like 50, 11 flashes. One flash, the sunlight, and then you start to mess around with putting stuff in front of the light, bouncing back with strange stuff, anything really. So, thanks for watching. And uh, I would like to thank all the coffee supporters. You are amazing, guys. Without you, this channel wouldn't exist. If you like to be a coffee supporter, you can find the link below. Okay. And, you know, as always, I'll see you next.